Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Pleasure to see you. Yours truly Megan here and let's get into this new dining room makeover. Yeah, I have a lot of explaining to do. Oops, I did it again. I designed a totally new dining room. I start told you guys that I bought the lamps and the two green vases at the design icons trade show in Amsterdam yes technically that was true that is what I bought as I was physically there but I saw these chairs here and could not get them out of my head cue Kylie Minogue I had just bought the table and found the chairs for my Gabriella Crespi dining room and talked myself out of buying them. But they would not let me rest. They were easy to find again and to do some investigation because they were from the same dealer from whom I bought the green vases. I found out they were Belmont Paris dining chairs. Unbeknownst, love saying that word, I feel so intelligent. <laughs> Unbeknownst to me, Balma, one of my favorite, all-time favorite fashion design houses, had produced furniture from what I believe was the mid-1950s to the early 1980s. Oh, I contacted him immediately. They were still available. He offered me a great deal and they were shipped to me from Salento, Italy. I will leave his Instagram information here and all other information in the description box down below because he has some wonderful things. Okay, now I was on the hunt for the right table. Had my eye on a Tobias and Afra Scarpa table, which I unfortunately lost in the auction. Other tables I considered were just not the perfect fit. I mean, these, these dining room chairs had to shine. And to tell you the truth, I did not want to give out a fortune. Remember my tips for decorating? I needed to follow my own rules. Excuse me, tips, not rules. One table kept popping up on Pinterest, but one thing I dislike with Pinterest, people will post things without naming the product. It took me two days before I found out this table was from Ikea. Yes, Ikea, the Murby Langa table. I'll put the name down here. I'm probably butchering that name. From the internet pics, I thought it would be within the same red brown color scheme as my chairs, but of course it was not. More in the direction of a walnut color, but in Ikea's defense, walnut was the description color. Even though it was veneer and not solid wood, it was described as a thicker veneer that had a sanding allowance. So I could sand it, then stain it the correct color. Yes, but what was the correct color? I started off with Nussbaum, not realizing that that basically meant walnut tree in German. I mean, we call the nut Walnuss. So why the tree something else? Whatever. So that means I was just restaining it back to the original color. Then I also tried mahogany because mahogany, it is a little more reddish in color and palisander because the chairs were closest to my palisander sideboard in my bedroom. I'll just roll the video for you and you guys can watch and see what I did. That's reddish, that's good. I know that's not gonna work. So I'm curious if, because if this 
dries to like pinkish. Hmm. I want to see, we know the noose bomb's not gonna work. What does it look like if I take some of the mahogany and mix it over the noose bomb? Are we gonna get a darker, redder that we like just in case that's too pink? So I want to try that. I still? Mm -hmm. See how that turned it mm -hmm. a little red? Okay, the Palisando Rusty Cal, I'm really surprised how. Chocolate it is? Yeah. As you see, nothing was exact, so I would have to result to mixing. My first attempt was mahogany, then topped off with walnut. No good. Sanded everything off again, back to the drawing board. I needed a little orange mix in with the reddish brown color. I went back to the hardware store and picked up some teak stain, realizing my sideboard in my bedroom was teak, not palisando. But again, you guys watch the video here. Okay guys, it's the next day. I've done two coats on the uh, table. But as you see, here's one of the chairs here. Even though orangey is coming through, it's still not as orange red here. And if you notice right in this area, that's where I had tested two coats of mahogany. And even though I sanded well, that area had more coats of mahogany and a little bit of the mahogany is still showing through. So I have two ideas. I'm gonna test out a coat of mahogany, let it dry, sand it lightly and go over it with the teak. The second thing is I have mixed one part mahogany and one part teak and I'm gonna see if that works. So let's get started. You see how really purple that looks, especially over the teak. I'm going to get a rag and kind of dilute that a little bit. Be right back. Okay, I ended up getting some tissue, so I'm going to wipe some of it off. Okay, that looks good. Maybe just a little bit more without adding more to the brush. Okay, now let's go in with the mixture. Maybe not so much on the brush. Okay, we're gonna let that dry and see what happens. Keep you updated, bye. Okay, after a few trial and errors, the formula was two coats of tea, slightly sanded between each layer and finishing with a layer of equal parts, teak and mahogany. I just based, basically mixed half and half together and that was my last coat. After staining was finished, we simply assembled the table.
Okay guys, table is finished. It's looking great. The color of the table and the chairs match perfectly. My idea was to pep up my Kasala chairs here and also possibly recover them for extra seating on the table, but I'm not liking it. You see how it sits way too low. I think it's a little bit too wide, especially if I wanna get two on each end so I can really have a dinner party of 10. So I'll have to go back to the drawing box. Okay guys, I'm liking this even more. I put two of my clear acrylic chairs from my kitchen at each end. And I think that's what it needs. It needs something that is see-through, so it doesn't take away from the table and the other chairs. And this will also stay a little bit to my decor theme. But almost in every room I have something uh, clear acrylic, and it would help balance out here in the open room because remember my large, large, uh, you know, put together different pieces of acrylic tables that make up my huge coffee table. I'll leave a video of that up in the corner or a, a tag of that. What do they call it? I'll leave, yeah, I'll leave a tag of the video or link. Sorry, losing my words. A link to the video um, so you could see that table, uh, you know, compilation. So for right now, I have three of these chairs where I can always bring them in from the kitchen when we have a dinner party. But I have one more clear chair that I think because of the shape may work better. Let me go and get that. Okay guys, I got it. My clear 1970s Z chair works perfect. I like the shape because the shape is more rectangular like the chairs and they're narrower. So I can get, definitely get two on each end. So that means I have now a table of 10 seatings. Okay, unfortunately I used to have two of these chairs, but unfortunately hubby broke one. So now I'm on a mission to find another three. If anybody sees one somewhere or sees a pair on Cherish, First Dibs, any other site that maybe I am not aware of, hit a girl up because I need to buy me some more Z chairs. Okay, so I know how I'm gonna solve the problem here with extra seating. And now let's do a little decorating and do some after shots. Until then. Of course, you guys, a little decorating, some decorating to my taste, and I present to you my new, and what I hopefully believe final for a while, new dining room. Here we go. Okay, guys, I'm done. I know I got a little extravagant with the uh, flowers, but I wanted something very tropical and very large because of the beautiful sisal or the sisal, as we say, lamps here. Now, remember I have the ladder here, which I'm gonna use to hang different fabrics that I'm gonna use as tablecloths. And the first one I'm gonna order is this beautiful ikat. See, with the greens and the silvers and the grays and the beige, I think you'll go perfect. I'd actually order a sample of this because I was thinking about um, recovering the um, Kasala chairs with it. But now I think I'm just gonna order two yards of it and uh, use it as a tablecloth because it has some beautiful green and blue um, uh, plates and table settings. And as you'll see here, how beautiful it's gonna go with the curtains and the color on the walls. And then it'll hang so nicely here on the ladder. And I love Ecot, which I've told you guys about before. Oh, please excuse my fingernails. I'm gonna go get a manicure today. But I've been working on this table and sanding and painting. So what can you expect with the nails? And then I wanna get a beautiful, maybe an African print, and then maybe a um, vintage Suzani. So yeah, let's get to those after shots. As you see, the chairs and table are a match made in interior design heaven, I may add. Not only in form, but now, thanks to me, in color. 
True high-end styled with low-end vintage with new. Remember, I promised you this. I just need to find an ideal way to expand the seating capacity so I am truly ready for all of you to come and dine with me. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please stop back by again. And as always, yours truly, Art Macon. Here we go. Is that how Vanna White does it? Remember, like, she's always... Now she walks across and turns the letters. You know, like Wheel of Fortune, where they have to oh. get, yeah, yeah, buy a bow. I would like to buy a bow. <laughs>